Hello everyone, welcome back to Altrius Plays Sky Vaults. I'm Altrius, this is Sky Vaults, and in the last episode we managed to get a few villagers going. Managed to get a bit of farming going. Now I noticed the last episode was actually two episodes all at once. Apologies for that. A little bit of inside baseball for you. I do tend to just pause the recording like this uh, and leave it for several hours um, whilst doing these single player things because it means that I can just sort of, at my leisure, record. But it does mean, ultimately, that I don't actually know how much stuff I've done. You dropped off some stuff. What did you bring? How many beetroot we've got? That's really nice. Um, we need to fix that. I don't like the fact these are in here. Maybe these are just in here by accident. Let's get rid of it and see if they come back. Um, and I need more farming. I need more beetroots. I need more potatoes. But I also need wheat. And if you recall, if I make this person throw wheat at another villager, it'll turn into bread. So I need. what I might do is replace all of this with wheat seeds, add another one on top, and some lighting, of course, to make beetroot and potatoes, maybe beetroot and then a third one for potatoes, and then use the villager throwing to other villager trick to farm those two crops. Another thing I need to do is get even more villagers going because we don't have the sort of, we don't have the range of village uh, we don't have the range of books that I want and we don't have anybody else to buy things from me. And if you recall it cost me 35 levels to put silk touch on this, which is why it doesn't have it, um, which is ridiculous. So I need a way of getting XP as well. And of course the villager breeding program is uh, not doing anything. Maybe we should throw some bread to them. Anyway, let's figure out what we want to do today. Apart from add some more villages and add some more farms, it's going to be a build or two. We also want to try and unlock maybe simple storage networks, but if you recall, um, this does require a pog to get going, really, which just means more vaults. So we're going to run some more vaults, get some more levels, try and get some more knowledge stars so that we can unlock this. It does cost two, you notice. And recall that my pouch is not at its best because it doesn't have upgrades in it. Why? Because, uh, what? No. Uh, upgrade. It's just called pouches. Um, because we want this pickup of our backpacks, and it needed basically stuff that we don't have. I think it was the steel. We're really struggling with steel, so we need to go get some more of the uh, carbon. Anyway, more vaults required. Maybe we'll start there. I'm going to figure out what I want to do first, and I'll meet you on the other side of this pause screen. Um, we'll go from there. So my, my hopper's stopped because this won't melt something if there's not enough room in the output for all the stuff. And one of the stuffs you can get is these focuses. Um, I don't think we've made in this version, in this uh, playthrough, a thing that can put these focuses off um, gear. But you can see that it reforges all prefixes and suffixes, guaranteeing holy. And the prefixes and suffixes are what we've got on here. You can see I've got an empty prefix. Uh, I've got soul bound and a stun attack chance. None of that is holy. So if I were to apply this to this, I would re-roll the 20% stun attack chance. I would re-roll soul bound, and I would guarantee that I would get holy on whichever one of those two that applies to. And holy, I believe, does extra damage against undead, being zombies, skeletons, basically most of the stuff you find in a vault, which is great. So that's a nice thing to have found. And of course, if you're not going to get anything like that, you see it's going to just keep going. Another one. Nice. This one's going to guarantee shocking. That's that's really nice. So all of these, the faceted focuses have uh, a focus, as it were, that they will give you. So it's the same name, faceted focus, but they have different uh, things that they guarantee. And I'm also going to melt down. These. So that's how that works. I'll continue melting down all the stuff that I didn't want. I'm hoping that I have already thought this through because I'm just indiscriminately bringing things out of here and putting it in there. So hopefully I have uh, already correctly done this. Let's get rid of this. Whilst making the hopper, I realised we're very low on iron. I remember that from last time. The way to make an iron farm is rather complex and it involves summoning golems by means of villagers. I, as far as I remember, you need to make the villagers panic, which means have a zombie nearby them. So I need to capture a zombie and name it so that it doesn't despawn, have the villagers near the zombie, but so the zombie can't get the villagers, and then you need to have the iron golem only able to spawn outside in such a way that it gets pushed down a tube and melted in lava, or, you know, some other fanciful way of killing it if you can come up with such a thing. But the, the core element 
of having an iron farm is to be spawning golems as a result of villagers being scared of zombies. So we're going to have to figure out how to do that. This over here seems like a possibly good place to do it because, you know, that's, there's always going to be villagers in there. So we'll have a look to see whether we can do that in, a, in a, an easy way. So you'll notice by uh, recycling jewels, you get a lot of wood to die, which is great. But it does cost a lot of wood to die to make the jewel. All of these things are required to forge another jewel. So if you're really looking for something, you can put some sort of gamble on what you're going to get. Um, it, it, it is worth doing because I think the gemstones specifically have no other use. Yeah, so you can you can see what you can do. You merge five wood to die. That doesn't seem like the right amount. Okay, that must be new. Uh, some silver scrap. Vault Bronze and the Gemstone. So all of these three we just got from melting it down, but the Vault Bronze is obviously the stuff we've got in piles you get from the vaults. That makes a new gem. It's completely random, just as if you found it in the vault. But it's worth it sometimes if you've got sort of a, an abundance of these things. And then you want to try on building something better. Well, what sort of episode would it be if we didn't start with a vault? I've used up all my lower level vault crystals, so we might as well make a new one or two. See what it wants. Fish. <laughs> it wants fish. I guess we're not starting with a vault because fish is going to be a lot of effort, I think. We could, we could go fishing in a vault. And there is an AFK fish farm uh, sort of setup that we can use. I might as well make one of those. Let's make an AFK fish farm. Uh, I'll show you how it's made. And I'll go AFK and fish. So, the way this works, the fence post holds up the pressure plate. Apparently the bobber is enough to press the pressure plate, which opens up the trapdoor, which means you can right-click on this and make the note constantly escalate, right, until the fishing bobber catches something, which closes the thing, means that the right-click that you do then does the fishing. So in that instant where a fish catches it, your right click, which is doing nothing except for attacking the note block, suddenly fishes the fish. Brilliant. So you, you saw me put this together, but it's very simple. The only thing to note is that this uh, trapdoor, A, it has to be iron, otherwise... I'm not sure why, actually. Uh, and then B, has to be on the block above here, otherwise it can be in the way. You'll note that I have silenced this note block, otherwise it would be extremely annoying. But from here... Uh, remember to put the hopper into the thing. We've already got rod, rod, cod, salmon, and a stick. So I'm going to spend a lot of time at this. And the trick is to sort of aim at the right spot. It takes a bit of a go, but you'll get the hang of it. So I'm going to uh, AFK this, and we'll see what we get out of it. Look, I've noticed this chap has not done any potatoes. I wonder if he has got an inventory full of beetroot. So what I might have to do 
just have a farm for each type. It makes more sense, doesn't it, that each uh, villager is only dealing with a single crop. Because it means you don't have any inventory issues, you don't have any... Well, it, it reduces the scope for issues, right? That would be my sort of instinct on the situation. Hello. So I think it's time to this vault that I was going to start the episode with, but instead I spent the past couple of hours in real life just fishing. I said just fishing. I didn't do it. I left the computer to do it. I did one fishing rod. As you can see, I wait for it to break and then that will do. You could put unbreaking, you could put uh, look of the sea or whatever it is, enchantments on your fishing rod to try and get more out of it. That would certainly make better use of your AFK time. But the cheapness of a single fishing rod does not phase me. So I'm happy to just get what I can out of one and move on. I got this um, brewing stand, actually, which is really lucky from inside the raw vault. Those are going to be useful because we are going to want villagers for whom the brewing stand is their pedestal, their, their workstation. They're called clerics, I believe, and they will sell things like potions and potion goodies. So I do want that, and I want way more. And that's good because I haven't been to the nether, and I don't really want to go to the nether because it's a big void. And I don't know how to get blazes to spawn there in the first place, and it's very scary. Anyway, let's open this bolt. Boom. This sword, by the way, I'm letting die. I'm not going to enchant it. Oh, and I recommend taking your magnet off when you go fishing, because you want the fish to land in the hopper and not be absorbed by your magnet before the hopper gets an opportunity. So, in for a penny, in for... Have we got everything? I don't know. Maybe. In for a pound. Oh, have I got a bounty? <laughs> no. It's lucky. It, whoa, look at this. Beginner's grace, good. Lucky, more item rarity, plus one set of living's chests. Nice. And we're getting elixir. Oh, phew. I thought I'd left my... Suddenly I wondered if I'd left my uh, elytra on, but no, I, I did the swappy thing. That's what that wardrobe is for. You make sure to swap when you get in. So how does an elixir vault work? Well, I was talking about it in the um, raw vault that we just did. But the way you do it, you don't know, personally, as you are, what it is that's going to drop elixir at least most efficiently. Well, you can be... um, so you have to do the things it says in the thing. Look, elixir's dropping from the baddies, so at least you have some chance of winning this. Um, you do the things, and you collect the things, so opening chests could send some elixir your way. That one certainly did. That was really nice, actually. You can see it landing on the ground. You don't pick it up. Don't get confused. And then when you've collected as much as you need... I will take the iron nuggets, actually. I don't need that. Um, you hand it in at one of these. I'll show you when we go up there. There's a little um, pylon. And you put it in the pylon. That ends the... Vault in need well, in 15 seconds, you don't have to find your way out. Which means you can go deeply into an elixir vault if you feel confident that you're going to win. We did really well on elixir actually. First. Oh, spikes. Oh, good. Um, first room. Already. Third, done, I say. And it's only the bottom half of the first room. Go away! So, a little bit of a hacks. Unfortunately, is that um, down here in the honey, this is supposed to be really cloudy. For some reason, with the shaders on it, isn't it? I'm not. I'm not going to turn the shaders off just because of that, <laughs> basically. It is a little bit cheeky, I grant you. So, this is a bonus living bolt, by the way. Plus one set of living chests? I don't. I think that's different from the living modifier, where you will find living chests randomly scattered around a place. I think it means that in POIs, even more living chests than previously. I'm not 100% sure. You can see the pylon up there, but I'm going to ignore it because I can't get up there. So, oh, I think they've updated this. Oh no, there is a random living chest. I think they've updated this so that you can go through the middle safely. Phew. Thank you for that update. Now, when you're in multiplayer, which you'll see from the stream footage, if you have a look at that, you have to wait for everybody to finish. But when you continue your elixir will go to your friends. So if you finish first, it's kind of a balancing mechanic. It's really like a really well-made balancing mechanic. Because, oh dear. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely um, if you have 
don't win, that means that your source of elixir is likely to be somehow more OP. You're getting elixir faster than you. So you won first. So then now your fast elixir is going to your allies. If you're in a group, that is. So yeah, it looks like you just get extra living chests in a POI. So that one we saw in the factory room, which I'm not doing, by the way. <laughs> Keep your comments. Um, it was probably part of a POI, it just happened to be on top. Ah, careful. Slimes will poison you. In bolts. So if you insist on hitting them, <laughs> try not to hit them too hard. Oops. Or too close. There's a spare one here, actually. Huh. Maybe it's both. If you don't, put in the comments for other people who don't know. Because obviously, I've made something. It's so hard to hit. So we saw, by the way, when we were at the bounty table, if you abandon a quest, it costs you eight hours before you can get a new one in that slot. That bounty pill there is how you re-roll instantly. So as soon as we use the lodestone in 15 seconds, we'll be teleported out of the vault and we'll be a victor. We'll be successful. Very much the same um, mechanic as scavenger pots. If you've seen those, if you haven't, we haven't got to them in this yet because they have been nerfed. I suppose they are now no longer available until a certain level. What level? Can't remember. <laughs> Sorry. They are fun though, so look forward to those. to find a lodestone. You cannot leave, by the way, I should mention that. It's not just that you don't have to find the exit, you can't use the exit. You have to find a lodestone in order to hand in your elixir. If you leave, you will survive, you won't get any death penalty, but you won't achieve the goal. So you won't get your achievement crate, you won't get your completion crate. So do find an, a lodestone. I know that I found one of them. I might have to follow my uh, trail back. <laughs> We should leave. There. We had some time. I'm not going to worry about it. Let's just hand it. Nothing to even hit. Right. Leggings. A crate. Got a good new jewel here. Look, we've got two things on it. That's really good. I think everything I've got so far has only got one. This is two affinities in 15, so well, an affinity and an item quantity. Small amount of item quantity, but it's something. Can't complain about that. Um, so, yeah, it turns out, in case you didn't know, <laughs> you can get more than one effect on a jewel. By the way, I learned from Tristan on the stream that pulverizing allows you to get more vault crisp the the rock chunks from vault stone got look at these rare plus 
common plus, rare plus, and the scratch plus. That's really good. Maybe no. Extra mana is good, especially with an empty prefix. Maybe we can get more health on it. Less armor. It's kind of rubbish. It's less health, but the thorns damage might be really good. What's it looks like an egg? It's a chamomile. So it's the artisan station here that will allow us to modify our equipment with those focuses that we've been finding. Any anvil, netherite, a bunch of chromatic stuff. Right, so let's make as much of this as we can. Which is not much still. Dear. I do want this. Well, actually, let's start sensible. The pickup upgrade is good, but it's easier to press B and just shift click, right? The pickup upgrade is good. The pickup upgrade is good if you have decided what should be going in your backpack already. The stack upgrade is good, just in general. And by using our backpack, we'll see what sort of things the stack upgrade actually benefits us from. So actually, the, the base upgrade is not doesn't require any steel. It's only the pickup one that requires steel, so you can do that. Oh, right. So if we take this and put it in here. Oh, look, there's more stuff. Let me roll this. Um, now, I'll show you, but I've run out of the stuff that I was going to show you. With. This is redstone, for example. This should be fairly obvious, but if I put this in here and this in here, 128 in a single stack of redstone, anything, of course. So if I'm going looting in the vault and I shift click stuff into there, I just save some inventory space for anything that we get a lot of, one of which was the raw carbon, as I mentioned in the vault. Although maybe I have cut that out. If I did cut that out, then now you know that I said it. So a lot of armor, not as much health. We've got an empty suffix, but I don't know if suffix is going to be able to help us in that. Well, we've got three things that we can try it out with. So why don't we make what I was looking at here, which is the artisan station. So here we go. If we put this down, um, this is getting cramped. I'm going to have to build it up a bit more. Oh, take a bounty while you're here. That's all right, actually. I'm going to take that one. Now, is easier to find in a hammer. It just is a bigger area when you mine, rather than a single block. It's a three by three, much like hammers in in what packs you probably already know. So we take some of this, for example. Let's do that. Then, whoa. <laughs> Put this in here. Zoop. This can stack infinitely as far as I know. And then we want some of this. This is also a safe space because you can just shuffle back in there as well. And then you put a piece of gear like this in the middle. Thank you. And then you pick whichever one you want, right? So this can guarantee one of the things. So this here will reforge everything. This one will reforge everything, guaranteeing something. I'm sure I had another one. <laughs> Let me have a look. Oh, look, there's one. Remove a random, random and modifier. So if you only have one modifier and you don't like it, you can just knock it off. So if we have a look at this and see the uses of this, you can turn it into three amplifying focuses just from nine. And an amplifying focus will just add a random modifier to your equipment in the artisan station. So we put this in here. So this will add a new random modifier. We only have room for an empty for a suffix. Let's see what we get. We got soul band. Rubbish. <laughs> This one, same job. Add a new. So we can only do this once each anyway, because we've only got one prefix. Of. Plus one armor. Interesting. Just got my lights equipped. Not helpful. And we'll do this one. Room for an empty suffix. Boom. Healing plus cloud when hit. That seems amazing. <laughs> more thorns damage. More health. Yeah, that's really good. So we're upgrading. And you can recycle the old stuff, even with durability loss. Yeah, this bloke's just drop in seeds. So I think this might not be the best way of doing this. But what I might therefore do is, as I said, make this the wheat farm. Keep this in place. Let's build another farm on top. Put another villager in it. Oh, we need to feed the other villagers. Make some more of them. We haven't got enough. Hello. Have it. And make more farmers.
Um, the farmer here is a farmer now, and you'll notice that I was staring at him for a while. I think what happened, so you can avoid this yourselves. I'm looking over there, like you're there. You can avoid this yourselves by not making the mistakes I did. The composter that was here was, I think, still bound to the bloke upstairs. I picked him up with the shift right click because, remember, he's probably got an inventory full of beetroot, and there's now beetroot up there. Put this guy down, expecting him to turn into a farmer, being put near a composter. Not the case. I broke this, put it back, he instantly became a farmer, probably because this guy was using that POI. Now that guy's using this POI, he's still a farmer, he's now a farmer, don't do what I did. Over here, one thing I really need to do is sort of put a an outside to this, because I haven't put a fence gate or anything to get in, and I'm thinking maybe I need some... I, d I don't know what I need, but I need a way into this that is not just relying on my dash recharging, but over here is uh, a villager, as you can see. He's hungry, he's unemployed, he needs food. As this person picks up pick, pick, picks up beetroot, this, you should chuck them at this bloke. <laughs> not yet, obviously, tested, apparently, because there's beetroot all over the floor, and he has not come over here to do it. Um, but there is, under here, a hopper. And under the hopper... Under the hopper chest. <laughs> under the hopper chest, yes. With no beetroot in it. So I don't know why he's not throwing the beetroot at the hungry man. He should be. Do you throw beetroot? Or is it just carrots? Bread, carrots, beetroots, or potatoes. Anyway, I'm going to build a sort of an outline to this, a ring, uh, an access port. So I don't know what to call it, but I need to be able to get it there without dashing. Thinking of maybe using a bubble vator to improve that, but let's start, you know, easy. And then, I guess the next thing, we'll build another one and fill it full of potatoes or something. It might have something to do with the fact that they're not on the same level, you can't get to him. I need to move all this down one. I was just experimenting with this and apparently you can reach and now you've got a whole bunch of food in you and you're gonna make a baby? What? None of that landed in the chest. I think what the problem might be is that that hopper actually needs to be one lower. I don't know which of my villagers <clears throat> will have enough food for me to sort of overstocking them with food before. Maybe we should just make another one. Let's do that. I have no idea which of the things I did made it work, but it's working. This seems like base. It, what? Why are you doing that? You haven't got any food. It's all gone in there. I don't understand. Maybe he's just chucking stuff. I think this will settle itself over time. But we've figured it out. Ooh, I don't know. Because I heard... It sounded like you picked some stuff up. Which is probably why you need to do... This. Because it stops you from getting close enough. But it doesn't. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe some of it will get wasted. <laughs> we just have to live with it, okay? Okay, well that's been about half an hour after all that recording. Although... It has taken me a few days, and I'm recording this at the very last moment before I release the video. I think this is working. There are 64 and a quarter stack. 64 and then a quarter of a stack, which is 16, uh, in there. Now, this, these two have started doing the breeding thing again, but I ha I'm pretty sure I've seen this person throw beetroot at that person and miss. And therefore it's gone in the chest below. I'm not sure. I guess we'll find out.
<clears throat> and you know, we go down here, we've just got this person chucking stuff on the ground. Eventually this farmer will fill up his inventory like the previous one did. Again, we'll just wait. Uh, the other thing we need to be working on is an iron farm. We're really, really low on iron. And as mentioned, we can probably build it over there where the villagers live and sort of duplicate, uh, double up on the purpose of the village breeder and the iron farm because I assume I can do that? I'm not entirely sure. Another thing to mention is that this was all recorded in version 8. Since I started recording in the past couple of days, version 9 has been released. And version 9 is going to make a lot of that obsolete. Um, it's going to introduce a thing called the Vault Enchanter, which means I can literally just pick whichever um, enchantment I want and just put it on my thing as long as I've got the levels and the emeralds. So the village hall up there is going to become a selling area where I'm going to start wanting to you know, throw extra resources to turn them into emeralds because emeralds are going to be a major resource for enchanting in the future. Anyway, that will do for this episode. Thank you for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed it. I hope you will join me next Monday, probably. Um, I'm going to try and record some more. I'm going to do some more vaults. We are only level 11. Oh, that reminds me. I did want to spend, whilst I'm still on camera, my one unspent skill point on Nova. See the keybind? That's what caps lock looks like. <clears throat> if you, I've unbound it in Windows so it doesn't do anything. And it's bound to that. Um, I'm going to learn this so that I can do this. And this is really helpful when you're bad like me and can't hit a baby zombie. It stops them in position, then you can hit them. It's got quite a long cooldown on it. But, you know, you only get baby zombies ever so often. So I have spent that on camera. Now you can see what I did. I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. I've been Archers. This has been Vault Hunters Sky Vault. And I'll see you next time. Bye.